Welcome more gamers, Doug here from 2 Plus Tough, and today we're going to be looking at the Path to Glory rules for the Mighty Night Haunt. Now, if you're new to this kind of content, essentially in the third edition of Age of Sigmar, there is what's called Path to Glory. That is to say, you can build an army and then see it develop and grow and add troops over time, kind of creating your own little story with uh, quests that you keep track of and things like that. It's a really cool system, and a lot of the newer battle tomes come with a lot of very flavorful mechanics to be able to let you tell the story of that army. One of the things I talk about frequently on this channel, when I review books, it's not so much in the competitive sense of how do they do like at tournaments and things like that, but rather how do the rules reflect the cool stories that are in the book. If the two don't add up, it's a bad battle tone because you can get all excited about the stories that you want, but if you can't bring it to the tabletop, what's the point? And really that's what Path of Glory is meant to be. Just, just further ways of bringing the story of a faction to the table. And now we're going to see how these guys add up. So we're going to head over to the Downward Cam and check out the Night Haunt. All right, so here we are down at the Night Haunt Battle Tome. We're going to go ahead and flip in. Now with these, I'm going to be mentioning sort of their army rules more so than when I do like star collecting box reviews because they kind of play into what's going on with the overall story. So we're going to skip ahead over here to the Path of Glory section, which is always after the painting guides, if I'm not mistaken. Here we go. So we have our core army rules, which we've talked about here with the Night Haunt. I think they did really really well in terms of getting cool rules for their new book and processions here we go path to glory starting on page 64 if you'll forgive me i need this to help me follow my eyes because due to recording that i have to keep the book further away than i normally would when i'm reading so uh, hunt, haunters of the realm. Night haunt are the horrors that haunt the periphery. Terrors that prowl beyond life's edge. They come in many forms, but all are destined to forever stalk the mortal realms and to drag the living uh, to the same doom. Okay, so... That's kind of what we're vibe we're going for. We're going for scary ghouls. Let's see how they deliver. Instead of setting up a, a friendly night haunt unit on the battlefield, you can secretly pick one terrain feature on the battlefield to be haunted by that unit. If you do so, place that unit to one side and say that it will set up in a haunted terrain feature as a reserve unit. Record this information on a piece of paper. Do not set up that night haunt unit until it is revealed as described next. Up to three terrain features can be haunted, and the same terrain feature cannot be haunted by more than one friendly night haunt unit. Okay, so you get to pick some stuff. I like that. We're going to come back to that point here in a little bit. At the end of the movement phase or charge phase, you can reveal one, one or more night haunt units set up with this ability. If you do so, set up each unit within one inch of the terrain feature it was haunting and more than three inches from all enemy units. Night haunt units set up in a haunted terrain feature are destroyed if that terrain feature is demolished uh, before they are revealed. So let's pause there and talk about that. So the reason I like this is actually because the first time we meet a night haunt model before the night haunt existed as a battle tome was actually in the Realm Gate Wars. The Stormcast move into a city City in the realm of metal and that city the location itself was haunted because of massacres there but I understand that for the purposes of like creating armies that can go places and fight various wars Games Workshop didn't want to have their core rules for the army tethered to a location and so Path to Glory to me is adding like and also there's haunted crap all across the realms so you're gonna run into those things but I understand that being a bit of a cumbersome system on top of the alternate deployment stuff that they get just for being night haunt in general so I like that as an addition because it allows you to tap into that haunted location fantasy without making it the entire army's shtick if that makes sense so that's cool uh when you make sorry they have discovering terrified territories um when you make an exploration roll which is your aftermath sequence thing um as your army is moving through the more realms, they're always finding new locations, and this is represented by a territory exploration roll. Uh, you can pick a territory from the Night Haunt Territories table on page 68. Uh, on a roll of a 61 through 68, they have optional ones that are army specific. These territories represent settlements and cities that have already been penetrated by malevolent spirits, and so they work differently to other territories in Path to Glory. Firstly, you do not spend any glory points to control them. You can do so automatically. Pause, that's a fantastic ability. Secondly, these territories cannot be upgraded. Okay, interesting, discovering terrified ter So if you roll a 61 through a 66 when you're doing your territory roll, you get the option to have a free one. Now remember, in Path of Glory, there is a limit based on how big your stronghold is, uh, on how many territories you can have underneath you, so we'll evaluate those as we come up. In addition to discovering terrified territories, as described above, uh, you can haunt territories that you control. 
In order to haunt the territory, you must complete either the Souls for Shyish quest or the Hatred of the Living, uh, which are quests that come in here in the Path of Glory section. We'll talk about those in a little bit. In addition, uh, you fight a Path of Glory battle using the Phantasmal Invasion Battle Plan. Sorry, if you do. So the results may allow you to haunt a territory. Okay, so they basically they have specific battle plans that are, are meant to give you extra rules. Um, haunt. If you choose to haunt a territory, at the end of step six of the aftermath sequence, pick one territory you control, remove the territory you picked from your roster and replace it with its haunted form from the Night Haunt Territories page on 68. Exercise. If your opponent is allowed to exercise the territory in step six of the aftermath sequence, you are not allowed to make an exploration roll. We're gonna to have to learn more about exercising stuff. Instead, your opponent can pick one haunted territory on your roster. If they do so, you must remove that territory from your roster and replace it with the original. Okay, let's see, let's check out these territories. I'm actually gonna skip ahead to that because that is seems very integral to how they play. Uh, seeing as how there's two of the three of your core basic rules for Path of Glory involve territory, so let's see what we got. Original form. The entries on this table included the original form of the territory in brackets after the name okay so you have your basic if you're not familiar um, your basic territory names so old keep ancient roads small settlement large settlement like these are just things that you would find normally throughout the things but these are just haunted versions of those same things let's see we're gonna look here so what is the old keep that you could find increase your hero limits by two okay in addition to uh, in addition in step two of the aftermath sequence roll a dice on a six up do not make an injury roll for one hero from your order of battle so it's just taking the original things increasing your hero limits these all did increase your limits and that kind of stuff for things and then allowing you to do extra stuff that's night haunt based specific so the next one is ancient roads which is upgraded into shyishian realm gates when it's haunted increase your allied units by two uh in addition to step seven uh the aftermath sequence roll a dice i six up you can reduce the casualty score of one allied unit from your order of battle to zero that's real nice tormented barracks which is the haunted version of small settlements increased your reinforced units limit by two in addition in step seven of the aftermath sequence roll a dice on a six up you can reinforce one night haunt summonable unit from your roster without any glory being spent that's that's incredible i mean it's a six up so you have to hold on to it long enough to roll enough dice to hopefully get one of those to be a six but uh next one is ancient battle site which is the haunted version of borderlands uh in step three of the aftermath sequence we'll roll three dice for each six up you can either give one unit on your order of battle that was not included in your army uh one renowned point or you can add one quest point to the progress selection section of the hatred of the living quest which we'll look at the quest next next is cursed city of order which represents a large settlement when it's haunted Haunted. Reduce the glory points, uh, glory points cost of adding a unit that is not a hero to your order of battle by two. That's awesome. In addition, in step seven of the aftermath sequence, roll a dice on a six up. You can reduce the casualty score of one night haunt unit on your order of battle to zero. Okay, not crazy different from some of the other ones. And then uh, soul infested slums, which is ruins of myth when it's haunted. Uh, once in step six of each aftermath sequence, you can roll a dice for this territory. On a six up, you gain one bonus command trait that your faction has access to, and it is added to your vault. So very, very important to there. Okay, so that's the thing we got. So essentially, you're playing your normal games with Night Haunt, and you're trying to uh, collect and haunt territories. I see a lot of glory being spent on upgrading your uh, stronghold, because that will allow you to have more territories under control. Uh, absolutely. And what you're hoping to do is just fish for more and better territories. Now you can haunt existing territories and then turn them into the haunted ones on page 60 that we talked about. And then of course, during exploration rolls, if you roll a 61 through a 66, you just find them. <laughs> um, so that's interesting. I haven't seen one of these that focuses that much on territories and I like, uh, even again, I, there's a bunch of white dwarf ones I haven't checked out yet. So let's talk about quests here. Uh, our first quest is going to be Souls for Shyish. This is one that was mentioned before when it comes to haunting territories. At the end of each Path of Glory battle, 
add one quest point. Okay, let's see, I want to read the flavor text on these. Give me a sense of what this quest is about. Um, there are those night haunt who roam the mortal realms alone or in small groups as reconnaissance units. If adequately populated settlements are found, the discoveries are relayed to the underworld for the targets to be reaped of their souls and vitality. Okay, so we got a scouting mission that's looking for souls. Okay. At the end of each Path of Glory battle, add one quest point to the progress section of your quest log if you want a major victory. Once you've gained three quest points, you complete this quest. When you complete this quest, pick one territory you control that can be haunted and follow the instructions for haunting. That's it. Um, and it's a pretty simple one because that's a great one if you were already playing a Path of Glory thing with your Night Haunt and then you got this book, then you can just start implementing these rules. I kind of like that as a concept. Also, there's a lot of ways to gain territory. You know, if you roll anything else on those D66s, this allows you to haunt them. That's cool. Next is Hatred for the Living. Um, oftentimes, the Night Haunt will approach the battle lines of war with the same patience of the Supreme Lord of Undead, stalking and harrowing their prey to stack the deck in their favor when they choose to finally engage them. At the end of each Path of Glory battle, add one uh, quest point to the progress section of your quest marker if you want a minor victory, and add three if you want a major victory. Okay. Uh, once you've gained three or more quest points, you can fight the Path to Glory battles using Phantasmal Invasion or the flight, fight or flight battle plans on 70 through 73. If you win a minor victory or a major victory in that battle plan, you complete this quest. The reward for completing this quest are listed in the battle plan. Let's go check those out because that's the only one that involves those plans here. So we have in Phantasmal Invasion and Fight or Flight. So let's take a look at these here. Got it up on screen right there. Nice. Okay, so we have Night Hunt territory in this kind of square in the center and then defenders on each side. So taking a look at this mission here, I actually kind of paused and just read through it here. Essentially what you're trying to create is an assault within a citadel attacking its siege equipment so rather than just going and walking up against the army essentially the night haunt have deployed special forces within the courtyard of a castle and then they have reinforcements coming in over time so here's how the mission basically works night haunt in the center square defenders on the sides the defenders are going to set up their entire army first all within one inch there's actually a typo it should say one inch but it says picks within one um but they're going to set their entire army up and then there's going to be two objectives one on each side that are known as siege equipment the last person in the game and this lasts for five rounds to have more models within one inch of the siege equipment claims it so you're basically fighting over objectives the thing is though that after the defender sets up their entire army the Night Haunt player has to alternate between setting a unit up here and a unit off the board. A unit here, off the board, a unit here, off the board. And rather than having normal restrictions for coming into the board, this mission dictates that one unit comes in per turn. And so that's kind of crazy because it is throttling your reinforcements, but it is incentivizing you to basically pick a weapon, go after it, get the siege equipment, claim it and then go after the other one because you don't have the strength to split into two at that point i'm assuming is the idea um i like this mission because thematically that is how they attack they come up from the ground within a defensive structure rather than just walking up to it and punching it in the face now if the night haunt player controls both of the siege equipment things they win the battle if they control neither they lose any other result meaning one and one is a draw nothing happened. If the Night Haunt player wins, they can immediately haunt one territory on their list as well as add one to haunted territory roles in the following aftermath sequence. So all those things we talked about with terrain bonuses like reinforcing units for free or having all kinds of reduced costs on buying expensive things. This is a great way to do that. You're accruing glory by playing more games and that kind of thing, but also you are maximizing what your faction already wants to do, which is haunt terrain and then reap the benefits of those rewards by getting plus one to that roll. Again, all those rolls were on a six for the terrain special effects. This is giving you a, another 14% chance increase on it. Now, if you lose, you do get knocked down two quest points on the quest that brings you to this. So you could keep trying again and again and again. It would essentially be you recreating a siege where you keep trying to attack the artillery. But yeah, it's an interesting mission. I like the, the setup quite a bit, actually. Checking out the second mission, Fight or Flight. Another interesting one, essentially, you cut the board in half here, and there's three points on the map that are called Concealed Shelters. The uh, crux of the mission is that Night Haunt are seeking someone on the their enemy's army who is a coward. 
okay? So they're attracted to fear. And so the entire army is like super stoic and all these guys are ready to fight Night Haunt. But one of their leaders is a coward and that's the thing that's drawing the Night Haunt in. So here's how it works. The um, armies are going to be set up, I think, let's see. The first thing is the defier, meaning whoever's against the Night Haunt player, has to pick one hero to be the quote-unquote coward. They start the battle in reserve, totally off board. The players then alternate setting up units one at a time, starting with the defier. Basically normal stuff, you can't be within nine of the line to go against your opponent. And so the whole crux of the mission is the Night Haunt player is trying to find the coward in these three concealed shelters. The minute a hero from the Night Haunt army is next to one of these objectives, you're gonna roll a die on a six. Uh, the coward is in there and he's found. If at any point two of the shelters have been searched and he's still not found, he immediately deploys on the third one kind of a thing. So meaning you've already looked in those tents. You know he's not here, you know he's not here. He must process of elimination be in the third one. Um, and, and then at that point it becomes, can the Night Haunt player kill the coward? Again, it's a hero model from the opposing army. It could be a really big, nasty, mean model, <laughs> um, depending on what it is. Can they kill the coward before round five? They have to find him, kill him. That's that's a pass-fail situation right there. Uh, Path to Glory, rewards and penalties. Basically, you get to fully upgrade and kit out a non-named character for your Night Haunt, give him a heroic upgrade for free, no matter how many glory points he has or he's still trying to earn or whatever, which is actually really nice because the Night Haunt have so many lesser heroes that getting more gas out of them, I think is a good is a good call. So if you're gonna invest in your heroes, this is a good mission. If you're gonna invest in territories as your focus, the one before it is it. And of course, this has the same thing. The next aftermath sequence, when you roll for all of those haunted territories, you get plus one to the roll. So very similar, but again, hero-centric fight or flight, which is, I, I kind of like this mission actually. I like when they're trying to tell a story and they're hunting fear, they smell it in the wind. And then over here to Phantasmal Invasion, which is more of a siege uh, themed thing. There's not really siege equipment rules or anything like that. You're just trying to capture objectives, but it's that scene that is often talked about in Night Haunt story. So I like those quite a bit. Um, one of the things in the, the second mission, the one that focuses on hero, is you get a free heroic upgrade, which in this case, you can, if you have it in your list, upgrade a Knight of Shrouds to a Knight of Shrouds on Ethereal Steel. So basically that's where someone can, you know, make their bones, so to speak, on the battlefield and get an upgrade for free there. Let's see, the only things really we have left to talk about are going to be the quest, not the quests, the, um, let's see, the remaining quest and the veteran abilities. So let's talk about those. Remaining quests here, Feed on Terror. Torment and Agony are the catalysts for the spiteful spirits of the night haunt processions. And if enough living beings submit, the aura of dread empowers them to greater heights of horror. I, mean, I love it. If they get them scared, the night haunt fight better. What more could you ask for? At the end of each Path to Glory battle, add one quest point to the progress of your quest log for each enemy unit that was terrified during that battle. Uh, let's see, terrified is a rule that has to do with their core rules when they basically engage an enemy model, they have a chance to scare the ever loving hell out of them. That's part of that. So it's just incentivizing you, go be aggressive. Uh, these ones have specific awards. This is like a play style. Uh, once you complete this quest in the next Path of Glory battle, uh, you fight against an opponent using Path of Glory army. You can give each Night Haunt summonable unit you use in that battle a veteran ability. The veteran ability can only be used once by that unit in that battle. So that's an interesting one. I, I feel like the reward is a little bit lackluster because it just sounds like maybe you chose to be hyper aggressive to one opponent, got this, and then the next guy you go on, you're just gonna dunk on him because some of those veteran abilities are awesome. We're gonna get to them here in a second. So that's it's a funny one. I do like how it incentivizes you to like do the thing that the army wants to do, be very aggressive, terrify your opponent, that kind of deal. Next we have Ethereal Rising. Um, with each territory claimed in the name of Nagash comes an increased connection to Shaiish. If a strong enough connection is established, the geists of the Night Haunt processions can return to the fray after falling time and time again. At the end of Path to Glory Battle, you complete this quest if you want a major victory and control six or more haunted territories. I think that's hard to do. Can Control six territories, like six territories, period. Let me think on that one, okay. When you complete this battle, in the next Path of Glory battle, you fight against an opponent using a Path of Glory army. You can return one slain model to each friendly Night Haunt summonable unit 
on the battlefield at the start of each of your hero phases. Super nasty, I like it. Especially for like if you're doing a weekend campaign where you're trying to get as many games in very closely and you know the the um, cause and, re and effect of, of the different battles is kind of felt more, I don't know, keenly. Because again, if you have one game night where you earn uh, a reward like this and then the next week you play against a different opponent, they're gonna be just getting crushed by all these cool rules that you have that came out of nowhere because you beat somebody else last week kind of a thing. I, I'm not super into their quests, but they have enough heroes that have enough um, space to like seek cheap artifacts and stuff like that. I think they are interesting as a faction within Path of Glory, if not their four specific quests. Let's move in talking about veteran abilities. So first one we have here is Cunning Frighteners. This unit can use this veteran ability once per battle at the end of the movement phase or charge phase. When it does so, enemy units are terrified while they're within six inches instead of three until the end of that turn. That's fantastic. Um, I mean, because it just projects what the other units want to do. There's no benefit that doesn't, no unit that doesn't benefit from this. Spectral Juggernauts. You can use this veteran ability once per battle at the start of your charge phase. When it does so, until the end of that phase, add three to charge rolls for this unit. Again, fantastic. You want to get them in there, get everyone scared. Favorite of Nagash. This unit can use this veteran ability once per battle at the start of the combat phase. When it does so, until the end of that phase, it has a four up ward, which, yeah, I mean, if you made a big a big reinforced unit of something like, I don't know, Blade Guys Revenants or something like that, and just sent them creening in, and once per game they got a four up ward as a bone splitters player, I know that that's quite nice. Uh, Champions of Olander. This unit can use this veteran ability once per battle at the start of the combat phase. When it does so, until the end of that phase, if the unmodified hit roll for an attack with melee weapons by that unit is 6, it inflicts D3 mortal wounds on the target and the attack sequence ends. You don't make a wound roll. That's huge. That's a big swing. Okay. Um, Shrieking Reapers. Uh, the unit that can use this veteran ability once per battle at the start of your charge phase. When it does so, until the end of that phase, change the unmodified charge roll required for that unit's to apply wave of terror effects to three to six for shriek seven to eight for stun and nine plus to petrify okay so normally when you do these charge rolls you uh, depending on the charge roll distance you do different abilities you can shriek at them um stun them and petrify them this is just modifying where those numbers land depending on your charge roll so it makes them more efficient at getting those abilities, even if you roll really crappy for your charges. Next is Punishers of the Brave. Unit can use this veteran ability once per battle at the start of the combat phase. When it does so until the end of that phase, uh, has a save of three up, which of course then they are ethereal. So veteran abilities, I like these because they are all very relevant to what the Night Haunt want to do. I think my least favorite is the Shrieking Reapers, not because it's a bad ability. It is a great ability, but because it's more to keep track of on a list where you're already going to be keeping track of a whole bunch of those other things, um, like other units also doing their wave of terror effects and stuff like that. So bookkeeping wise, but the rest of these, they generally are, you pick them in the combat phase. There's one up here where it's um, movement to charge and then a charge phase. But like, I feel like when you go to do a thing with a veteran unit, it is in general, very interesting. You can just be like, oh yeah, I need to extra movement this round. I need to deliver wave of terror effects. So you can just do those kinds of things more freely. So kind of taking a step back and thinking about the Night Haunt Path to Glory in total. I guess I was a little surprised. I feel like there would be, there, I thought there would have been more mechanics, kind of like the Fire Slayers have with accruing Urgul, but maybe accruing uh, souls for Nagash's service or something like that. Though I understand they just did Deepkin, which were also accruing and banking souls, so maybe they just didn't want to retread the same ground. In terms of design space, I do like the faction because I like how they play on territories quite a bit. Um, I think it's a much cleaner and more elegant way to do territory stuff rather than Orc War Clans like defacing things. I feel like that one was very poorly written. But this is, uh, I think, a, a cool way to incorporate that. Now, uh, I'll be saying uh, the quests, I don't think were my most favorite. Although I do like the missions. Uh, the missions that are tied to these actually I think are very interesting because they paint a picture of notable scenes from uh, Night Haunt lore. So I like that. Uh, but for example, like these two at the bottom here where you achieve a mission and then in your next Path to Glory battle playing a Path to Glory army, meaning your opponent's also doing this, you get to just kick their tail in with extra abilities and stuff that don't really show up anywhere. I'm less cool with that as a design idea. 
Again, because if you play Billy week one, achieve the quest, when you go to play Ron next week, you're going to bring the steel boot, and he doesn't necessarily deserve that. So that was the one I'm, I'm like, meh. I don't like it. I would never, I would never really do those unless I knew I was going to be playing a buddy like two games in a day or something so that they could feel the brunt of it. And then I really actually like the veteran abilities. We talked about that. I like all the territory stuff. I feel like they couldn't come up with a way to upgrade something into a black coach. You know, I don't know what that would be, but I feel like there was, there was room here for more interesting things. They have so many heroes, and you're telling me none of them can, like, I don't know, upgrade into another or something? I don't know. The missions I thought were really good. Again, fighting inside a castle. This one is focused on manipulating your territory specifically. And then fight or flight is about hunting the cowardly leader, which is a super cool way to, um, I don't know, just to kind of pose a, a reason for battle. And this one lets you fully upgrade a hero. So if you're going to do this one, bring a... Knight of Shrouds on foot, you'll get a free upgrade to being a cavalry boy. And then it goes into the processions and stuff, but honestly, I don't really see myself using those. So friends, this is had been the thoughts on the Night Haunt Path to Glory all in all. It's very simple, it's very straightforward, uh, a lot less depth than some of the other ones, but also I feel like it really emphasizes the army's abilities. So if you are already enjoying Night Haunt in a competitive sense, or even just a casual gaming sense, with match play rules, all it's doing is just bolting on more cool stuff to those which is nice because you're not learning an entire separate system it's just modifying the things you've already had to digest in a book where there's already a lot to digest so i think that that's it ends up being a positive in my eyes whereas some books that are like stormcast were are more straightforward their path of glory section is also a little bit bland but they don't have nearly the the fun depth of rules and all kinds of stuff that i feel like the night hunt do so they end up being bland I think this book benefits from having a more simplified Path to Glory thing. That's what I'm trying to say. If you have thoughts on this, uh, or if you want to talk about your favorite rules that you saw, personally, I really like the veteran abilities. Champions of Olander, when you can do D3 mortal wounds on each hit <laughs> rather than just the normal damage, sounds real sexy. And I love the idea of just having, like, you know, knights blessed by Olander herself, the Mortark. So I like that one. If you have another one that you like, please let me know in the comments down below and let me know if you enjoy these uh, Path of Glory videos. And I'll keep making them. So thank you all so much for watching and listening. And I'll catch you next time. Happy Wargaming. <laughs>